How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we are going to talk about this little knife here in S60V blade steel and we're also going to do a pocket dump day... Oh, let me put this down. Eight? Day eight, I think, of pocket dumps for 30 days. But guys, let's talk about this little knife here first because this is my first ever knife in S60V blade steel. I didn't really know much about this at all. I did a little bit of reading before this video, so we're going to talk about it. But it's kind of, um, I don't know, a lost steel. It's not very common, so I'm really excited to test this uh, during our testing that is starting. So this is the Duckhead Forge Slater model, and this is something that I worked on with Dusty over at Duckhead Forge. This is a beautiful little small EDC knife, maybe bushcraft knife or, or outdoors knife, I guess I could say. Um, just a really small drop point forge finish knife. And this one has sure grip handle scales on it. So this is G10 infused with rubber. All of this black here is rubber, super grippy. We've got a little bit of a palm swell like a coke bottle shape but modified i would say just a beautiful little piece of work here uh these will be coming into production and sold at pops knife supply they will be in k390 and those are in the works right now but this one the first run is in s60v so this is just a little tiny knife here beautiful piece and s60v from what i've read was a steel, a CPM steel that was kind of um, reiterated and, you know, played around with after 10V. So it looks like from what I've read, 10V came first and then they were looking to make a stainless, high, higher vanadium steel and it was originally called CPM 440V and then it was turned into S60V and there isn't as much information on S60V as some other steels. It looks like some other people had some iterations of it um, and, and some, you know, their hands in it, I guess. But um, not a lot of companies have used it. And it's kind of a, a pretty decent mix of toughness, edge retention, and stainless properties. It's not the most stainless steel, but it definitely is pretty stain resistant and it has really good edge retention. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people use it. Not a, not a lot of people get their hands on it. I do know that Steve Kalari from Kalari Custom Knives has made knives in S60V, but aside from that, I don't really know of too many other makers that use it. But Dusty decided to make this in S60V um, from what I've read, it looks like you're trying to aim for 61 plus for an HRC, depending on if you do cryo or not. Um, without cryo, I think it's 60 is a pretty good one. And with cryo, 61, maybe 62. This one has clocked in at 62. A lot of the literature on the steel seem to have talked it down to like a, a lower procedure which would lead to like 55 to 57 HRC and that wouldn't really bring out the correct properties of the steel. So um, Laren posted an article saying that he was playing around with it and he found that um, running his procedure and getting it to 61 plus was a little more beneficial for the steel. But I'm really excited to test this. Beautiful piece, um, full flat ground, and it's not forged, it's just forge finish. I'm not entirely sure what that gold area is. It's not a smudge, it's actually the steel. So I have no idea what any of that is. I've tried to get it off, but it did come like that. So I'm not sure if that's some staining, some patina, no idea, but it is there. But really excited about this. This does have a tapered tang, very tapered actually. And it may look like on camera that there are little holes and stuff, but what that actually is, is this forge finish here. And um, there's epoxy filling in the texturing because obviously there are little gaps and stuff with that type of finish. So Dusty filled all of that with epoxy. 
that way it, there were no gaps or anything. So even though it looks like there are, there aren't. But just a beautiful piece that we're gonna start running here. Wanted to show you guys, it's extremely comfortable, really, really cozy. And this little hump here fits in between your middle finger and your ring finger. And there's a little bit of a, a diagonal swell, which I don't know if the camera will pick up, but it actually runs down like this and it literally fits perfectly in your fingers. Melts right into your hand. Decently thick blade stock, and I think it's like 20 thou BTE, so pretty beefy for a little knife. We should, in theory, be able to do some decent work with this. So this is one, one that we're gonna start running right away, and I'll do a pocket dump and just show you guys where this is riding. This came in a black leather sheath made in the USA. So this has just been on my belt all day like that. Really, really nice. Dusty's a great guy. He, um, I wouldn't say works side by side with Steve Kalari from Kalari Custom Knives, but I think Steve has helped him from what I've heard with his edges, like um, getting better edges on knives. And I know Steve worked at Pops, Dusty works at Pops. They're, they're all integrated together. Everyone knows each other. Um, so very, very cool absolutely beautiful so duck head forge you're definitely going to want to keep an eye out on dusty's page because there will be more slaters in k390 but let's do the pocket dump so today we've got levi's 514s today with a light wash really really nice um they do get dirty pretty quick but uh we don't care about that here um front left pocket pocket crucifix and chapstick as always back left pocket issuing stitches hank probably don't have to take that out we see that every single day um on the belt all we have is this slater model here nothing in the back right and in the front right we have the nice guy machine company side piece pry bar yes i actually do use these i used it today to chisel all of the ice out of the freezer at work because it wouldn't close and this is a really great chisel and scraper it's got a very wide head on it i would say that's probably an inch an inch wide really useful tool so that is in my pocket using the pocket clip and then down in the pocket we have the fail safe goods smash and grab wallet that crazy horse is really wearing in already. Beautiful patina starting up on that. Great minimalist wallet from Failsafe Goods. We've also got a little County Com flashlight in copper. And a new Richter slip, which let me put this stuff back in so I can show you guys what's in there. Um, this is a really beautiful slip. It's an Italian leather, and I'm not sure what kind exactly. I think it was some long name, but look at how shiny it is. It's beautiful. Very thin. Like a very lightweight leather. Um, really flexible, just paper thin, but shiny and gorgeous. So thank you, Michael. And down in there, we have the case Sodbuster Jr., modified by Josh Francis at Knife Guy Mods, clearly in carbon steel, because she's got the beautiful teeners. And this one is in um, some sort of glass micarta something. It's a like a glass reinforced micarta, I believe. It's really interesting. I think it's actually called G3. Um, so it kind of looks like micarta, but I would say it feels more like G10. It's extremely soft. This has orange liners, so it's the, the Slater configuration, of course, or the Slater color scheme, I should say. But this is riding down in the pocket. Half stop has been put into that as well. Beautiful piece. I wish that the camera would focus because I really want to pick up on how beautiful this is, but it's not, it's not going to focus per usual. But that's riding down in this Richter slip, of course. And the reason I carry 
a traditional knife is number one, I just really enjoy them. Um, but number two, now that we're moving into this testing of the fixed blades, um, I always want to have like a, a smaller, tr you know, traditional knife on me just because it's not always super appropriate to pull out a fixed blade to do your tasks. Like we don't have any knife laws here in New Hampshire, but if I'm around kids or something, or I don't know, like maybe my boss or something, I would rather just pull out like a little pocket knife to do a task sometimes as opposed to a fixed blade. So that's, that's down in the pocket as well. And that's all we've got today. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the pocket dump. That's a little bit of info on S60V, which I'm very excited to test. I'll just show you guys real quick the, the fit of the jeans. So 514s are pretty straight legged and relaxed, I would say. Um, true to size though, these are only a size 28 waist and they're a little baggy, um, but I like them like that. So I would say true fit. We've got the zero Prios on today for the shoes and I think that's all I have for you guys because the girls and I are going to Margaritaville again tonight. That's kind of like a Monday thing, a Monday tradition at this point. We we go to a place um, down the road called Frontera. It's a Mexican restaurant and we just go and get like margaritas and queso, um, myself and all the girls and just kind of catch up. It's nice to nice to just keep in touch with each other and talk outside of work and stuff like that. Nicole Dodge will be going. Nikki will be going. Um, we're all friends, but uh, yeah, uh, that's basically it. I did want to mention that um, that challenge that I've been doing as well, the No Spend 2024, where I'm not spending money on anything really aside from the essentials, like no, no knife stuff, no clothes, no um, hobbyist items, literally just like food, fuel, dog stuff that I need, of course. Um, that's basically it. It's been going really, really well. It's definitely tricky not buying certain things. Like there was a Primitive Bear Knives drop today of Adisto's, the Gen 2 version. And there are so many beautiful ones on there and I just wanted one so bad, but they're $350. Like, could I get it? Yes. Am I going to? Absolutely not. Um, I wish. But it's pretty wild how much money you save when you don't spend on dumb shit. So I started this challenge on January 1st, where basically in May, and I've been calculating my savings um, since this challenge, and I've already saved $3,000. I didn't even realize I was spending that much on things I didn't need, but $3,000 I've saved so far not spending on clothes and gear and silly things that I didn't need. So, um, yeah, it's just about May 1st and three grand. That's pretty crazy. It also has really opened up my eyes to a lot of things, which I'll make a separate video on. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of document that because I thought it was so, so cool that that much money has been saved just not being selfish, I guess. But that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm gonna get ready here to exercise the pups before I go down to Margaritaville. Um, I will see you guys on the next video. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. Thank you, Dusty, for this beautiful knife here. I really appreciate you. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.